does the thing, you know, protecting Jay, trying to talk some sense into Roman. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Roman does that, like, really brilliant spot. Again, you know, despite doing this, it doesn't make him seem even weaker as a heel. You know, it, it still, like, really uh, builds on top of his heel persona. The fact that uh, he, I, I mean, it, it it was fake crying, of course, you know. It was but, like manipulative. Yeah. It was, so, it was pretty good. It was, this was the best. I hated, like, a lot of the pandering in the middle of the match. They're like, don't make me do this, Jay. Like, it just mm-hmm. went on for too long. When he was broken down crying i was like i didn't think the guy could do something like that i thought i thought what's i actually had the thought what is happening you know what i mean yeah and what happened jack did he turn a corner did he wake up and realize what he's doing to his family did he pick them both up and say let's go home guys (laughs) nope he grabs them (laughs) and pulls them into the guillotine golly gee pulls jimmy who's been out of action for a long time into a guillotine choke. Yeah, and that was the one thing that was going in my mind. I was thinking, you know, uh, Jimmy's been out, you know, because he had to get surgery. I think it was a leg injury. I so, think so, too. what was running through my mind was, it, has he been cleared? Are we going to see a spot where, uh, you know, Reigns, like, spears him, power bombs him, starts attacking him, you know? But I thought, yeah. you know, the submission was the right way to go if he's not yeah. fully cleared, you know? Uh-huh. Invol- it doesn't involve Jimmy getting hurt in any way. It's pretty safe, you know? Yeah. And I, I really like, uh, I guess you say, this whole ending, you know, especially the theatrics. Like, as soon as he pulls him in, the first thing uh, Jimmy starts doing now is reaching for Jay, you know? Yeah. Whereas it's been the reverse oh, the past so two. Good. You know, it's been the reverse the past two where Jimmy's protecting Jay, but now Jimmy's reaching out for Jay for protection, you know? And and, and how, what does Jay do? How does Jay fend off this big dog off his brother? I'll tell you what he didn't do. What he did not do? He didn't start kicking Roman in the face <laughs> to try to get him to release the hold. <laughs> I mean, come now. He's, he's a man who's been battered and beaten. He's not going to pop up like Drew uh, McIntyre. Yeah. Like, like you can play those uh, SmackDown vs. Raw video games. His little avatar in the corner is glowing red. Throbbing. <laughs> no, no way. The man has enough energy to do yeah. one thing. That, yeah, there's... There's no explain. way that we're going to throw a, qu- uh, a, a little uh, twist to this. To yeah. prolong it. <laughs> no, gosh. 40 minutes later. No, he has just enough energy. He's not even standing. He doesn't pop up. He's on the ground. And he yells, I quit, I quit, I quit. Ends the match. Goodness yeah. gracious. Yeah. Very good storytelling, but you know. Absolutely. You know, it's it's the, it's the more sadistic side of me. But after all was said and done, I couldn't help but think how much more evil he would have come off if one... Instead of a guillotine, he put Jimmy in like a leg hold because that's what he got, you know, worked on, right? He came limping at Clash of Champions to help his brother. So imagine like an ankle lock. God, that would have been terrible. He could have accidentally put him back on the shelf. And then if not that, what I thought in my mind was, oh, it should have been Naomi. Roman should have just put Naomi in the guillotine. And then Jimmy would have, (laughs) Jimmy might have killed him. (laughs) <laughs> or Jay might have killed Roman. Yeah. No, solid storytelling indeed. Yeah, I definitely didn't need the cell, but you know, definitely didn't need the cell. Yeah, and you know the reason why we thought uh, it was gonna be you know the or like why we thought it might have been the main event was because of that final scene. You know, as uh, as they kind of go to commercial break to prepare for the next filler matches. Now here's the thing. When yeah. Roman starts walking up, yeah. up the ramp, and he does that, like, grin, yep. I honestly, I, the last thing that I thought was going to happen was, was what ended up happening. I thought, I thought, okay, here's where they're going to choose to insert the rock. You uh, know? You're still waiting for him. You're yeah, still waiting I, some, for, him. for some reason, I was thinking, this is the twist they're going to give us. The rock is uh-huh. going to be standing at the top, like, Looking at him like, I'm going to put you in your place or something, you know? Yeah. I wasn't expecting what ended up happening. What happened, Hmm. Jack? So he walks up, and, you know, he's walking up with Heyman, and then you see two men walk out, kind of dressed, uh, how would you say, like in traditional Samoan gear, I guess you say. Not not, not really traditional, but you see two men walk out. 
It's uh oh Sig Sigan Fatu. No, Hoffa. no, I'm, I'm sorry. Hafa uh, and Sika. 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 Roman Reigns' is uncle and father, mm. also known as the Wild, the Wild Samoans. Samoans. Yeah, and and you know they play up the fact that the two of them are wearing you know uh, lay. the lay, you know. Yep. And you know when when Jay made his entrance, he was wearing one of white, but right. the two men are wearing lays that are red, and uh-huh. they and they have and I believe it's Roman's father has a red yeah. one, and he puts it on him, you know. Yeah. Reigns hugs his uncle and his uh and his dad, and they both just kind of stand there to symbolize that you know he's at the top, you know, along with them. Mm-hmm. Dastardly yeah. heels, those wild Samoans, even into their latter years. I I wondered, I thought, is he gonna flatten these two old men? Goodness gracious, it'll be amazing. But no, he was anointed. Yeah, old, yeah. I, at first, I was like, guard. I was this like, is the head of the uh, table now. Yeah, I was like, don't tell me they're going to come out here to try to punch him or something. And we're going to yeah. see this. But then when I saw his dad holding the, the lay, I was like, oh, no. Okay. We're not going to we're not gonna see, like, some really messed up thing going on here. <laughs> there could be. There could be some. Uh, there could be something cooking by somebody that you might want to know what they're cooking in a little bit. Yep. <laughs> this all could still be building up towards that. No, no, no. The twist is that it's going to be the man who did it for The Rock. It's going to be Rikishi that shows up. That would be incredible. We're going to see TLC, Roman versus Rikishi in a TLC match. You should have known The Rock wasn't anywhere near the building because he was too busy inducting Ken Shamrock into the Impact Hall of Fame. That's right. <laughs> wait, wait, you forgot. You, you forgot. Uh, what's it called? Copyright and trademark. That was the pebble that showed up in the Impact Zone. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> the pebble like he was like he wouldn't go with stone or granite or the boulder <laughs> or the brahma bull you know yeah but so you know really good storytelling but it's spelled q u e <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah you know really good storytelling yeah it seems like they're either going one of two ways you know give roman a couple of uh I guess you could say somewhat filler opponents, you know. I think they're going to give him Daniel Bryan maybe mm. after Survivor Series because I think they're going to yeah. do champion versus and champion. I think correct they- me if I'm wrong, Jack. Did Paul Heyman imply that when Jay was beat, he was going to become Roman Reigns' indentured servant? Yeah, he said that, which I think, I mean, it was kind of different from what Roman had originally said, or at least from yeah. what I heard, you know. Like the way yeah. he said it, you know, Jay saying I quit was a way to, you know, prevent his family and stuff from being, I guess you could say, exiled from the NYU right. family. He, he described a bit of banishment. Yeah. yeah. Where but Heyman made Paul it seem Heyman like... in the pre-show described something more humiliating and that might prolong this even longer, which I have my reservations about. So a new, so a new faction... Maybe, yeah, a reluctant one. You know, yeah. we've seen people reluctantly fight side by side along people. Yeah. Yeah. And, I don't know, I think they maybe give Daniel Bryan as a sort of, like, filler opponent, maybe at, like, TLC or something. Uh, maybe give him someone at Royal Rumble. Yeah. Uh, but who's he going to fight at Crown Jewel? Uh, <laughs> oh, probably one of those new, really... uh Tough guys from uh, Retribution. Mm. Since they just seem to be thrown out now. Okay, okay. <laughs> we'll get to that a later. Of, a lot of shade being thrown. We'll get to that later. We and, will. You know, be- before we move on, I just want to say, you know, I think they're either building up to Big E versus Roman at WrestleMania or The Rock versus Roman, you know. But here's the one thing I'm hoping because of what happened this year. I'm hoping they don't throw Roman into the elimination chamber with five other men and just have him run through him. Mm. And I only say that because, you know, I don't have hope that they'll do any different than what they did this year where they had Shayna run through the entire Raw women's division, you know, and made them all. I mean, all the women in there except Asuka compared to Baszler, you know, aren't, you know, you don't see them as a credible threat other than like Asuka. 
yeah. but like at the same time you look at the effects it has it's like now you look at the raw women's roster and you're just like okay well who even is a credible opponent at this point you know yeah it's a problem across the company right it's like you've got and like the, the, the draft didn't immediately fix this issue right who do you have that can challenge the top guys yeah but you know, I uh, you know there was an awful lot to say about this match. It was a compelling story, a well fought match, a ton of history. Yeah. All of those things are missing from what's next, and I don't <laughs> mind it at all if we don't say it too much because what could be said about Elias <laughs> versus this, Jeff this is Hardy? Only palate cleanser. <laughs> yeah, you know, I I saw someone say you know if you take out a lot of the filler matches that they had, you know, which was Jeff Hardy versus Elias. Uh, Bobby Lashley versus Slapjack. Yeah. Uh, I don't even remember what. Uh, I think that was the only other match between them. You know, I mean, Miz versus Otis. I had stakes. You know what I mean? There was something yeah. on the line. I don't know if you call it filler. Yeah. I know a lot yeah. of people who would. <laughs> yeah, but you know, if you take out all the filler, it's a really good pay per view. But at the mm-hmm. same time, you can't take out the filler because then you're just left with three matches. And you're left with three exhausting matches. I bet, yeah. actually, how I perceived ba- Bailey versus Sasha or even Drew versus Randy would have been hindered if they were one up on each other. Yeah. They would have gone, oh, I'm tired. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, like like being at the end, like the tail end of an eight-hour WrestleMania, you know? Yeah. And, you know, this match of Elias versus Jeff Hardy, it just reeks of must-be-Monday, you know? Because <laughs> it's like... Elias! Comes out with a guitar, starts singing about the folks uh, in the Thunderdome, and he asks them to silence their cell phones. And I wondered why didn't he ask the company to just mute those mics? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been topical. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I mean, there's nothing much to say. You know, they fight, and then you know, Hardy gets himself disqualified by hitting Elias yep. with his guitar. And the only question I have is. Does Elias not have a TV to see that? Wait, does does one does Elias not have a TV or two? Does he just not watch SmackDown like the rest of us to not have seen that they already said it was Sheamus that hit him with the car? <laughs> yeah, the orange hair and bearded gentleman was cited by several witnesses, but he seems to either have not gotten the memo or is ignoring it. Yeah, my favorite part of the match is at the end before they go outside. Jeff Hardy is standing on the corner post, and it looks like he's going to swan on it, except Elias starts rolling out, and Jeff doesn't move. He just adjusts, as if to say, I'll hit you if you're on the, on the, uh, you know, their apron, but then, like, he rolls out. Now he's on the floor, and Jeff Hardy, again, just adjusts, as if to say, I, I'll hit you from anywhere, man. And it's not until Elias finally stands up that Jeff decides to go down and meet him, but it was like, you could see him go, I don't care. <laughs> I really thought he was going to do that. Mm-hmm. I, I thought he was going to, because he kept I, he kept adjusting himself, following him. And I was like, okay, here it comes. And then when he was close to the table, the you know, like the announcer's table area, I'm like, okay, so is Elias going to like fall back on the table? Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, I'm, I, you know, I'm so defeated. And then we're going to see that, <laughs> you know? No, no, can't break that table. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, I, I just had to search this up just to make sure I said it right. You know, me, when I saw that Elias rolled out, but he didn't roll out of the way and laid on the apron and Hardy adjusted, I thought, is 43-year-old Jeff Hardy really going to pull a Darby Allen and jump, try and do, like, the jump onto someone that's on the apron for them to move out and them to just land back first onto the apron, you know? Is 43-year-old Jeff Hardy going to do... A forty, a bust a forty-four-year-old Matt Hardy and jump off of something he shouldn't onto yeah. something he shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, come on, you, you got to think, man. You're you're almost you're at forty-three years of age. You really think you can take that bump, you know? Yeah, yeah. Thankfully, he was a little smarter, played smarter, not harder, and uh, and lost the match because of his fiery nature, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. But uh, again, filler, you know. But at least it, at least, like as, as much as I want to complain that you know it was filler, at least it's good filler because it keeps, it, it gets you refreshed so that you aren't you know, 
getting overwhelmed by the amount of cell matches they had. I was refreshed.